Well, hunting, you know, you call it a skill, but it's uh, better identified, and believe me, I hunt with the bow and arrow, so I know this a little bit more painfully than most. Plus, I hunt every day for probably 250 days a year. I hunt with the bow and arrow, which is an incredible challenge unto itself because it's such a, a short-range weapon. But the overall attitude towards hunting is one of stealth. It's a learned skill and a learned art, dare I say, a learned ballet, a ballet of being one with the beast. If you study the great hunters of the past, the great Native Americans and Native African hunters that are still carrying on in Alaska today and all across this country today, I spent time with a bunch in Michigan recently and this week in Texas, I'm going to be taught even more by people much more stealthy than I am. It's about a higher level of awareness. Number one, understanding your position and respect place with the animals. How you need to get close to make a clean kill while not intruding. The trick, especially magnified with the bow and arrow, is one of penetrating their defense mechanism without being identified. And even with a long range rifle, you've got to break into with a conscientious awareness and stealth and clever strategizing into the defense mechanism that God created for these prey animals. That caribou will see you at a half mile away. It will start to get nervous at a quarter of a mile away and you're still out of good rifle range at that point. So the hunting mindset is one of understanding your place with the animals, how to utilize the terrain, the conditions, the shadows, the topography, and how to read the animals. I killed a beautiful doe in Michigan this morning, and as it approached me through the forest, and the same thing with the caribou, same thing with the moose, my bow was on my lap, so I need to read that animal and make sure that there aren't any other animals ready to read me and perform that ballet of getting that bow into ready position before that animal knows you're there. So if the animal does get into a shootable position, you are cocked, locked, and ready to rock, Doc. You don't have to make any intrusive maneuvering. Your maneuvers are already complete. Whether it was with the rifle, the handgun, black powder, or with the bow and arrow, or an atlatl, you've got to already be in shooting position when that animal enters your shooting range. And with the bow and arrow, that's got to be 15, 20 yards. So when she looked the other way, I was able to come to full draw with ultra quiet clothing, the wind in my face, the sun at my back. You have to do it. You have to do everything right to ambush a creature. First of all, to deserve it, to earn the shot, and to be worthy of the gift of protein. So the, the, the whole hunting lifestyle is about being more responsible, more accountable. How we place our, our foot in a conscientious way so as not to disturb our surroundings, whether you want to kill an animal or just be pleasant to your fellow man, um, versus the non-hunting lifestyle, with, with all due respect, I have many, many ultra courteous and loving, compassionate, wonderful human beings that don't hunt. But a hunter can't stumble. You can't walk carelessly. You can't be careless or you'll buy chicken. And of course, who wants a salmonella barbecue? So to reap the physical and the spiritual rewards of the hunting lifestyle, is about an acute, gung-ho, extreme conscientiousness of how you fit in. And not just here, but here and here. And that magical sixth sense that you can hone back there. The animals have it, so you better have it, or they'll win, and then you'll buy chicken, and that's no fun.